there's a lot of prosperity uh, um, prophets th that are around and you hear them, they say in 30 days, you, you're going to get well, what you always wanted. You'll be rich in 60. In six months, you should see the glory and the blessings of God. Or well, next year, this time, you should have everything you ever wanted. And we see them all the time. But the truth is, they're right. Hey, listen, between me and you, I need your help. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers before too long. So do me a favor, hit that like button, hit the bell, subscribe, um, do everything to help the channel because I really want to extend my messages as much as possible. Um, I think it's good content. It's, maybe it's okay to you, I don't know. But but hit like, support, um, subscribe. I want to get uh, to a thousand subscribers actually, um, and uh, help me do it. Um, share th th these videos that, that that I post. I just need your help in doing so uh, because I feel that uh, the perspective that I have is unique. And I think other people would appreciate it, but we don't know the algorithm without likes or, subs or subscriptions, you don't get any airing time. So like and subscribe and also let me see what you have. And I also would like and su subscribe and support you too. Thanks. <music>I'm looking at um, the book of Ruth and the book of Ruth is to me, there's no better love story ever written. It's a love story on many different levels, but it begins with Naomi. And Naomi is one of those arrogant ones. This is Mother's Day. She's an arrogant mother. Why? She has a husband. We know the type. She has sons. That means that her future is set. That means that everything that she could have wanted is hers. That means that she is, she is seen as blessed of the Lord because she has a husband and sons. And in those days, a woman without a husband or son to take care of her, she, was, she fell prey to anyone who, who, who wanted to take advantage of her. In fact, she had difficulty even owning land or, or going to court to, to receive her land. We know the parable of the unfaithful judge. And Naomi goes with her arrogant self, we call it stink, with her arrogant self and she leaves because Israel is undergoing famine. And we know that type, that she, she's that, that, that type who only cares for herself, who's only interested in what is best for her. She leaves other family. She leaves her in-laws. She leaves whomever is there left. She doesn't care. She's only concerned with what she has. But hear me. There are people who might have left you. There are people who did you wrong. There are people who 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 who, who could have helped you right now. And and you're, you're wondering why does evil always win? Just leave it to the Lord, and the Lord does what He always does in such circumstances. And the little that Naomi had, see, she thought she had everything, but it was the little. Hear me. If you identify with what you have more than you do with the Lord, you have very little, and it will come to pass. As it came to pass, Naomi lost everything, her husbands, her sons. She's left with her daughters-in-laws, as we know, and they, and, and they leave all except Ruth. You see, when Naomi has little, she has much. She really has what's valuable. If you have a little right now, you have what's valuable because it's not the things. What will it profit a man or a woman if they inherit the earth and, and lose their soul? Naomi still had her soul. She still had her faith in God. She had something about her that Ruth saw. And Naomi thought she had, she had nothing. But when she looked around, the little that she had was Ruth a Moabite, uh, an accursed people. And Ruth was one of those accursed people. And all that my Naomi had, her arrogance, she tries to, 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 to get a come up or try to advance herself by tying herself to people who are not of God, but she thought had enough substance so that she could become raised up in life. And she winds up with what she thinks is nothing. And she goes back like many of us should. You see, don't be afraid to go back to where it, it all began. Don't be afraid to start all over again. Don't be afraid to try again. Don't be afraid to, 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 to just humble yourself and, and come back. Humble yourself and come back to the Lord today. Humble yourself and come back to church today. Humble yourself and get back to prayer today. Humble yourself and pray in the morning. Just Humble yourself. And Naomi thinks that she's destitute and she comes back with Ruth. But Ruth understands. You see, that's why it's important that we who call in the name of God do the best we can because an outsider could be watching. You see, it's not the words that we say that, that impresses people. It's how we behave. And, and Ruth, who was an accursed person, saw 
the glory of, of God within Naomi. And, and, and she wanted what Naomi had. And she says, I will follow you. Let my God be your God. And they come back. Naomi says, I am bitterness. The Lord God had a plan. You see, the little that Naomi had within this roof that's a cursed person was everything she needed. If there's something around you right now that you think is cursed, turn it around. It's not cursed. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And Naomi was able through her, her wisdom that she gave to Ruth and Ruth's obedience to turn this thing around. The little that you have, God is going to bless. I'm, I'm looking further at, 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 at how... Even the, 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 the uh, how should I say, even the motto of this country, e pluribus unum, and it means out of many, one. So I leave that alone. Out of many, one is out of the motto of this country. But God is in reverse. God speaks differently about this thing. What God is saying out of one, out of the little, he's going to turn it into much. God operates separately and differently from what the government and, and the rulers do. So we should not be worried too much about what they do. So let them act crazy. Let them do what they're supposed to do. You see, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty for the pulling down of, of strongholds. We must also never forget that, that when we think we have a little, right now you could not, you may not have enough. You may not have enough to, 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 to pay that rent, to pay the mortgage, to Keep the lights on. Your job might not be working out. Uh, you might be looking for, for some place to, to, so you can take care of your family. You might be waiting on that next paycheck. The, it, this is tax season. You might, be, you might be waiting for that because it's going to make a difference. But hear me now. Um, what you have in your hand, a little two cents that, that you might have in your pocket, the little overdraft amount you might have in your checking account, that is more than enough because we serve a God who created everything by his word. You see, if he can create everything by just speaking words, what more do you think he can do with you and through you who believe in him and who is worth more than all the lilies of the valley, that, that, than the sparrows? That, that, and, and, and he says they don't worry because they know God and what God will, will provide. There's also the example of having a little, and you might have a little uh, right now. And I think I'm using this little on Mother's Day. It's because it's often the mothers and the women who have to create, a, 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 use a little to create a lot. There might not be enough food. There, there might not be enough anything. And you have to manage because let's be honest, you have to manage. And, and often you're the one who, who has to take care of the business, take care of the children. And you often don't, don't, don't have enough. I'm not talking about people who, who are rich. In fact, even if you're rich, you got the same darn problem, not a monetary problem. You may not have enough love. You may not even have it, it, enough satisfaction in life. In fact, you might be cursed with riches and th thought that that would bring you what you need, but it brings you nothing. So everybody, rich or poor, is in this circumstance. But I'm reminded of the little boy's lunch and, 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 and you see, this little boy had faith. You see, suffer not the children to come unto Jesus because such is the kingdom of God that we, we approach with that innocence and that hopefulness of a child. Here come this little boy with the lunch. And, the, and there was masses, like 5,000 people, and they counted only a man. So if you're kind of women and children, you, you might have had 25,000. Who knows? And he had his lunch, two fishes loaves of bread, and he feeds the masses. Let me tell you, that little that you have right now can feed the masses. That, that little thing that you think that is no good is able to do it. Huh? That little bit of energy you have now can turn this world around. That little bit of life left in you is, 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 is enough to bring down kingdoms. That little idea that you've been tossing around in your head and you think it won't work, I rebuke you because that is able to change people's lives today. Naomi had such an idea. Look what it did with Ruth and they fit into the genealogy of Christ. I'm looking at even, even the Samson, crazy as he was, buck wild as he was, yet still he didn't need he didn't need chariots or, or, or swords to get the job done. He used the jawbone of an ax, of an ox, of an ass. And if you got to use the jawbone of whatever it is, it could be a neck bone, I don't care. You just use what you have to, to get the job done. You see, the little that you have, God will increase. I'm reminded even of the widow who had just a little bit of oil, a little bit of spirituality. And all she got from her neighbors were empty vessels. You see, sometimes all we can get from our neighbors is empty vessels. Why? They don't have anything either, but that's just fine. But what she did, she closed the door behind her. She listened to the prophet. She understood the word of God and she 
close the door behind her. Close the door to those things that are behind you. Put those things aside that easily beset you. And you press toward, forward towards the mark. And she had more than enough to pay off her debtors. Hear me. You have more than enough to pay off your debtors. And more than enough to live on. If you just close the door to the past and, and hold on to Jesus' hand. I'm remembered by even Moses. Hear me. Moses was a nobody. <laughs> Moses had lost it all. Moses was a was a laughing stock. Here he was, the prince of Egypt. Now he's herding goats. Here, if you're herding goats today, if if you have once was on high and now you have to scrape and 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 do whatever you can to get by. Hear me now, Moses. Mosina, I'm talking to you because all Moses had was his brother and all he had was a staff. Yet still he used to deliver people. Hear me. You can be used to deliver. You can deliver yourself. You can become great. And Moses was an old man. Hear me. It's not too late to turn this thing around. I'm even reminded of Gideon. Gideon had a vanishing army. Pastors, let me hear you. Where, where are you? If your army is, is, is vanishing and diminishing and it's getting smaller by the day, hold on. It, it's going to show you. Who is going to win the battle for you? It is not the multitude. It is not, you don't trust in chariots and horses. It is not the multitude. It is how the little that you have is being used by God. Our great God, David, King David, what did he use? Pebbles. All he can find was some rocks to, to, to fight this big monster. Yet he did, and he did it not by the strength or anything else, but by what he had experienced with the Lord. Hear me. It's what you have experienced by the Lord that's going to bring this thing to pass. And, and the reverse is true. I'm reminded of the, 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 the merchant, the, the, the wise merchant who, who, who found the pearl of great price. He wanted a little and he, he, held, he, he gave everything he had just to have the little thing because he understood that all those things are mockeries. All those things that we have. we In this country, we, we rent storage places to store our junk. Can you imagine? And he didn't want those things. He just wanted one good thing. Be comfortable in the one good thing that you have. I'm reminded also going, going in reverse. There was one little thing that even cursed humanity. The fruit. The fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. We see, even if you screw up with what God gave you, God gave you, put you in a garden of Eden. He, 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 he gave you a, a, a mate that was made with your own fiber. You were in possession. They say Solomon was the richest man that, that ever lived, but I'm sorry. It, it was Adam because Adam had it all. He had everything that was on this planet. I, I value how much the earth is worth today, and that's how rich Adam was. Yet still... That was one little thing that, that, that brought them down. A fruit. Hear me. You can be as, as impactful in the world as Adam was. And one little thing can bring you down. Why am I saying this? Do not ever, do not ever disdain the little things. Uh, do not ever disdain the, the, the little things. The little things you think that can harm you will bring you down. The little things that, that you think are not enough will bring you up. But even though Adam and Eve blew it over a little thing, it just, it just, Set them up for the coming of Christ. If you have screwed it up today, if you have done wrong, if you have done people wrong, if people have done you wrong, if you're as guilty as sin, and many of us are, hallelujah, Jesus, you just you just reach out to the Lord because that's when your heart is, is open most to receive. And, 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 and God said to them, even though they blew it, that it's the seed of the woman. On Mother's Day, I'm telling you, sisters, that will bruise the head of the serpent. Hear me. I don't care if your health is failing. I don't care if you're on your deathbed today. The Bible says that, that, that Abraham, Sarah was so old, they were nearing death. But what happened? Hey, multitudes. Hear me. We stand in, in that group of multitudes today. Not because he was great. Not because he was powerful. Because he trusted God. You trust God today. That even though your body's failing, even though you, 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 you think you're in there on your last breath, you trust God today. Here's another example. The thief on the cross. He knew he was going to die. He was facing death. In fact, he had been tortured and nailed to the cross next to Christ. But yet still, he spoke out. Speak out today. Ask the Lord for, for what you want, that you want to be with him in paradise, even though you're as guilty as that thief. And many of us are. Can anything be too hard for God is, is what I'm saying. And Paul, 
Paul spoke about putting on the full armor of God. He was describing the, the, the accoutrements of the hoplite Greek soldier. But what is Paul is saying, even if you have none of that, even if you got nothing, because sometimes these Greek soldiers, they didn't have it. There were the, a lot of poor guys there. You had to forge your own armor. A lot of poor Greek soldiers, but they fought like savages because some of them would fight naked with whatever they had and they would throw rocks, boulders at you. And and, and what Paul speaking about when he when he speaks about this armor, it's not just the armor because he says, doing all you can, just stand. Just stand today. Just stand on a little bit that you have. You are more than enough. You are more than a conqueror. You are able to turn this thing around. It is not too late. You have not gone too far. You are not beyond salvation. You are able to make this thing happen. So shut the door behind you. Come back like Naomi did. Pray with that little bit of oil you have. Hear me? Look at how other people are praying and worshiping and join them. Hear me now. We are talking about the God that split the sea, the God that sacrificed his son and, 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 and that son rose again. And this is a God who's saying to you that with that little bit of faith that Naomi had to return, that the widow had with the oil, that the boy had with the bread, that David had with the pebbles, that, that Gideon had with, with the few men, that Moses had with a staff and just his brother, that all these people had, that Adam, that Adam had with his guilty self, that Abraham had with his withered self. If you have just the, the, the faith of a mustard seed, hear me now, you can say to that mountain, be removed, and it shall be removed. And that mountain is nothing other than your doubt and your lack of faith. Father, I thank you, love you, and adore you. Lift you up, and I give you praise, honor, and glory. And I thank you for what you're doing today. And in your holy name we pray, amen.